Okay, let's start by opening a Dynamesh 64 ZBrush project. I don't have the standard material applied, so I use my own Grave Sculpey material. And turn off the perspective and the floor. So, since I'm going to do a bust, I will use the Move tool to block out the general forms of the head. I will start with the chin and flatten the sides a bit. So I got a head going on right now. I will use the move tool with the Alt key to push in or pull out vertices. Just work on the shape. Cheekbones, eyebrow ridge, and nose. Okay. Just pushing in and pulling out vertices. I mask out the ears and then use the move brush to pull out. I'm not re dynamishing the sculpt at the moment. I will try to use the dynamesh as much as I can without re dynamishing. See, there are some pulleys that are distorted right now when I'm pulling out the arms. That's not a big problem. And now we'll mask out the neck and use the move tool to pull it out. Again, move brush. Try to get some form in that. Working on the nose. Think about how the nose should look looking evil now, much more evil than before. <laughs> Still pulling on the nose and the mouth area. Okay, this looks good. I can work with that. I redynamished it, and now I smooth out the stuff that I don't want to have. You see, stretch polish. Now we'll give him a bit more rest, upper body. It's going to be a bust, so. In the back, I got a very big distortion that I can't use, so I have to re dynamesh it, and then I can sculpt on that again. I use the clay tubes just to get some muscle structure, bone structure going. And define some stuff. Like the cheekbones, the jawline. chest again. Work a bit on the ears. Using the dance standard. I will alternate between clay tubes, move brush and dance standard a lot. Actually I don't think I will use any other brushes during the roughing. Again, I'm moving, moving the eyes, and clay chewing on the horns. Okay. I was not really deciding how it will look. When I started the sculpt, so I'm experimenting a lot. 
up now and I'm trying something to get the shape flow on the back of his head. Actually you won't see it in the, in the final picture, but uh, it was something I wanted to try out because I was not really sure how the final picture will look like. I actually decided that, that during the posing phase. Okay. Now it looks a little bit like the uh, goblin <laughs> with horns. Side view. Okay, now I'm using a clay tubes brush to give it a bit more flesh. I want to have a strange structure going on his head. You know, he's not human, he's a demon, he's from another world. So I can do what I like on there. <laughs> I'm not using any reference, uh, so all the stuff that I'm doing there is uh, straight from the head. Um, I don't like to use reference when I'm speed sculpting because uh, it's I'm really distracted when I look at a second monitor or a reference and uh, I want to just get into some some zen mode just sculpting sculpting without actually thinking about things one thing that I did differently now was uh, that I was talking during the sculpt, and uh, that actually slowed me down. <laughs> I I figured that, and uh, I was actually oh yeah, I'm doing a big mistake there. I forgot to turn on the back face mask for my clay tubes, and uh, they activated it. So adding more muscles, more more mass to the sculpt. I redynamished it. And now I up-res it to 128 of resolution. I was moving out some stuff that uh, Actually, looks a bit too jaggy, but I keep most of the stuff that I have <coughs> going on there. The distortions on the vertices. I like to uh, have some happy accidents that I can work with, so I'm not smoothing out everything. I don't want this uh, sculpt to be look lifeless and, and clean. I like a lot of wrinkles and, uh, you know, like it's a uh, clay structure. I'm working on the nose and the eye area. And at this point I was deciding that there will be some some teeth coming out on the sides of his mouth. I didn't put them in yet, but I knew where I was going at that moment. So, reshaping the head a little bit, more shape. detail that you actually have to rebuild afterwards. I use the dam standard to, to make the, the lines pop out more. Roughing out the details on the 
the head and on the back of his head. Yes, there's also already a lot of stuff going on on this uh, character, in my opinion. I should have stopped there. I actually, I wanted to show you some other stuff, so just kept going. <laughs> out a lot of the stuff that I did on the back of his head and did a little render test how the shadow would is falling and now I put on the eyes because uh, the eyes to this point were just rough ideas how it would look and I put an eyeball in there now to actually get a good shape them together and now I'm use move brush to place the upper and lower eyelid around the eyeball. Looking at the sculpt, is everything okay? Something looks strange. Yeah, found some stuff. <laughs> Now I use the clay brush to add some subtle volume. The clay brush is a very smooth brush and uh, I like to use it to, to, to pump up certain parts. Without getting too harsh. I'm adjusting the chest again. It seemed too too narrow for his for his head, so I widened it. And again, placing lines with the damn stuff. And I just add wrinkles and wrinkles and wrinkles and try to fill out holes that I see using the clay tubes. Okay, now I'm doing a Z remesh because I think I have a good rough going now, so I reproject the details on my Z remesh. Sculpt and then I'm going into deeper detail. Again, using the clay brush, clay tubes, damp standard, and move brush. Now, I'm working on the eyes. Put a lot of uh, a lot of work time in the eyes. I think I, I think a lot about the eyes because uh, we'll actually describe the character a lot. How his eyes look, how his uh, expression is. So now I'm preparing everything for the placing of the tea. Detailing the ear again. Just filling in where I think 
needs to be some something, some some details, some fads, some some more mass. Working on the shapes, the sub shapes. Again, come back to the eyes. I was not satisfied at that point with the eyes. The eyes are the mirror to one's soul. So they say. And now I'm basically doing the same procedure again and again. Smoothing out, redefining. It's a scale brush and I use it to add some detail to the horns. I'm also trying out some some ways to incorporate it into his uh, actual body. Some ideas look good, some don't look good in my eyes. Just trying out stuff there. Again, take the damn standard and going back into detailing. Now I'm putting in the teeth. Just made a copy of my eyes and then use them as a base for the teeth. Using move tool and the move brush. I just smoothed out the tips, made a dynamesh out of the teeth and smooth out all the imperfections. I have to adjust the lower lip. Again. Trying some more ideas on the eyes. If you think that I'm not talking enough, it's merely because uh, I'm doing the same stuff over and over again, going into detail, trying to find places where I can, well, just do stuff. <laughs> I don't think too much during that time, I'm just functioning and uh, trying to get myself satisfied with the, with the look of the sculpt. Eventually uh, I should be into a solid hour now with the sculpt. Um, 
when I'm doing uh, spit sculpts. I give myself a time frame of about 45 minutes to 55 minutes and uh, try to get results in that time. Uh, because I was talking during the recording, I um, just slowed down and uh, well, I'm slower on that video now. Just adding my own touch to the to the structure. It was made up using my scale brush. Adding clay tubes using smooth and move brushes. I open the eyes too much. Pushing and pulling out facial features. Made a little mistake on the eyes. And now I try to give him some angry, angry look by pushing up the lower lid. Around this time I sometimes turn off the symmetry. Um, didn't do it yet, but uh, I will get to that. I'm working on stuff that you won't actually see in the final result. <laughs> I don't know why I'm doing this. I have, um, as I said, there's not much brain going on. <laughs> style eyebrows. Okay, now I will add some alpha brushes I'm using the ones that you can find on the Pixel Logic site in the download section. Some of those actually are imported as textures, so you have to convert them to alphas. Use a drag rectangle to get in some detail there. Just add these cracks to give him some skin structure, some basic skin structure. Okay, choosing another alpha now. Bump skin. To add some pores. This will give it a more leathery look. I'm adding some veins, also using the drag rectangle.
I will keep doing this now for quite some time, so I'll leave you with a track by Romeo Knight called Dope Onward Ride by Yugi. Okay, see you in a bit.
will do something that I'm doing lately. I will mask out the cavity and then I will inflate the inverse masked areas so I can emphasize the, the cavities even more. This gives a nice effect if you want to have maximum detail models. You can push them with, it with this method. You can see they are much more evident right now. Okay, now I will apply a Zebro skin material. I use them pretty often and start poly painting the model. I went for a cold color so I can make his eyes in a very warm color. I would like red and make them glow later on in Photoshop. I'm now applying the other materials like the Zebra Eye Matte Cap on the eyes and give it a basic color, basic dark red. And now I will apply the Zebra Skin Material on the teeth and give it a basic color too. Now I'll switch to the standard brush and uh, do some spray painting. I'm doing these just a moment because I will figure out that I still have Z's up turned on <laughs> which I don't want okay okay now we'll put some dark shade around his eyes and uh, add some skin tones very soft skin tones uh, and make the horns. Uh, I'll make them black for now. But I think uh, I will add some color to it later. So it's just basic color idea. I want to have some color values playing there. And now I'm applying a basic shading to the model. I put that in the poly paint. It's pretty much like you would paint these little Warhammer figures. You also paint in a little shading, a little shadow casting or ambient occlusion. I'm adding some light spots. Okay, now some more flash tones for the ears. So the idea is dark around the eyes, flesh tones for the nose, ear tips and for the lips. Now I'm adding more hand painted shadows in a cold color value. Now I'm adding more hand painted ambient occlusion. I tried some brown for the horns, but uh, I didn't like it in the end. Okay, now I'm doing a selection, a cavity mask, and uh, filling the mask with a with a color in RGB mode, with the intensity setting to eight. I keep repeating that until the cavities are actually filled so I can see them. It's a nice illustrative look. And you can put even more emphasis on the details. Good. 
Now I'll paint some flesh around the eyes. Try how this looks when it's rendered. Okay, I like it. So I could continue adding color, flesh color. Now I'm going to pose the mesh so I can actually decide on how this sculpt is going to look like in the final picture. So I mask out the head and rotate it around. See what looks cool. Where do I want to have him in the picture? Where do I want him to look? also giving me the opportunity to add some more asymmetry to the sculpt using the move brush. Don't overdo it. Just some subtle stuff. I'm pushing around parts of the body with the move brush and then sending back from Terence Postmaster to the actual model. Now I'm doing the test rendering for the main light. I want to know where the main light is coming from. Okay, I see I get some nice shadow casting going on there, but the shadow rays are too low, I raise them up and I lower the angle. Okay, now I see that the horns are going over the eyes, the shadows, and uh, I want to get rid of that. This doesn't look cool. Still adjusting some of the angle and lower values of the shadow. adjusting the perspective. I don't want to have it on default. It's really distorting the, the image too much. Uh, I found a nice angle of view, so I store it in the custom one of the Zeppelin properties. Yeah. Now I've got a lot of ugly shadows happening on the forehead something I don't want to have. So I'm moving the light a bit in front and now those ugly shadows are gone. Now I'll add some color to the eyes, some shading. I'll make it dark on the upper eyelid and add some subtle glowing to the eyes. Now some flesh tones on the teeth and some dark brown. He didn't brush his teeth that well. Okay. Now I did my first render pass and uh, save out this image for the compositing part. And name it so I can later on identify it full light. And I save out all the other passes there, mid occlusion, depth, mask, and shadow pass. I'll turn off shadow and ambient occlusion render again and save out this image to just the material and color pass. Now I turn off all the color and material info 
and use the basic material to give a rim light. I'll put it on the left side, pick on the behind. Okay, turn off the main light. Turn on shadow for the rim light. Interesting. A little bit. Okay, turning on shadow. And also in the render pass. So save out this image. There's some light happening on the lower part of the skull, but I will erase that in Photoshop. And now I will do a front light, very subtle one. Okay, saving out this one too. Calling it reflection light. And then I will use a matcap for some metal reflections. Okay, I saved that out too. And I will now switch to Photoshop. In Photoshop I will use scripts, load files into stack. Put my renderings in a layered image. I reorder them so I have my color and material render passes down below and the lighting passes like the rim light and the front light and the metal shading there just about that. Okay now adjusting the levels on the reflection pass I put the rim light on additive, linear dodge, and the metal pass on color dodge, it seems. Now I'm adjusting the U value, the saturation and lightness on the front light. Give it a little green color, and again adjusting levels get more contrast. Now I open up the ambient occlusion pass. I'll we'll put that on multiply. Also adjust levels. Now I add the shadow pass. Put it on multiply and change the opacity. I'm losing the eyes here, but I will erase out these parts. Get them back in front, okay. They will glow later on, so it's not a problem that the shadow is not that strong in that area. Okay, now I'm adjusting the layers so I can have a good definition of the character and the details. I'm taking the full render as an overlay for the whole image to make more contrast and adjust the even saturation. Now I got a nice grey skin with a light blue tone. Yeah. Very nice. So I'm taking the mask and merge all layers together, duplicate them, and add a layer mask on the image. 
I'm going to take the depth pass, add it as an alpha. Try not some stuff that I'm using the depth pass as a fog, but uh, it didn't work out, so I ditched the idea. Didn't like it that much. I think I kept a subtle, subtle fog. It's just a very subtle thing. Yeah, match it down. Okay. I'm brightening up the eyes. Dutch tool. Okay. And now I use the crop tool to give the dimensions of the final image. Try to keep the head in the center of the image. And now I get rid of some lights on the lower part of the image and uh, add some background. values. So I picked a warm background against the cold foreground. Adding another layer with some grunge stuff. as an alpha. I select the eye as a focal point and adjust the radius so I have a little blur, little focal blur going on. Play around with the values. I always do that, I always crank them up and then put them down. I want to see how how the, the image behaves when I'm adjusting the values. Doing some photo filter. It's a nice way to add some warmth or some cold to your picture. Now I'm doing some HDR toning. This will boost up some detail in the in the the shadows. I played around with it uh, for a while while doing this uh, this image. Didn't keep all everything, but um, I think later on I will use one of the results as a as another layer. I copy the image, go back in history, and paste it on top of uh, the earlier image, and then blend it with an overlay or soft light or something like this. So I'm just playing with values and uh, the shadows and the highlights option too. So 
under adjustments, image adjustments. Yeah, you can get some very strange results when you're playing with this. Also, some happy accidents. Maybe you can use the result in parts. Just erasing the stuff that doesn't look good. Yeah, playing with the curves. Trying to get a more illustrative look on the image. More sharpness. Yeah, now I'm adding some some more color and some more shading. Replacing a color in the in the image. I pick a color and then just U shift it into dark areas and I added some some blue light or well I shifted it to, to some more blue gray so the colors affected were much more brighter now. Okay now I took the image I cranked up the levels and added a Gaussian blur and now Put it on screen so I have a subtle glow on the highlights. I'm using lighting effects to add another subtle light effect. Didn't like it like it was. So I went back. I'm using the history to go back. Yeah. That's warmer light from the top left. And now Put some grit, grittiness, some dirt around the image. Yeah. Looks a bit rusty. And like leaking spray pan can the spray paint can. Put that on overlay, I guess. Yeah. No. And some some more glow, some brown glow that I will use shift later, I guess. Yes, make it more more bright, more blue. And now I'm adding a glow for the eyes. Blurring something that I paint on there. Blurring again. Put it on linear dodge so it keeps the color. Okay. Now the eyes glow like a demon. Like a demon's eye should glow. Now I imported an image, some grungy looking image from CG Textures, I guess it was, and uh, I colorize it and put it in overlay mode. So I have feeling that there is a canvas underneath the image. Just in a very subtle way, so it's like 10% or something. Yes. Now sharpen the image. I do a lens correction, a shift, chromatic aberration shift. Add a vignette and tilt the image for about one degree and play around with the remove distortion slider. So sometimes it gives a nice effect. Okay. 
Now I add some noise. So it gives a more photographic effect. Just the exposure a bit, camera correction to brighten it up a little. And then put in my signature. Well, this wraps it up. Thanks for watching. See you soon. Goodbye.